This video is brought to you by WorldSoccerShop.com, offering the world's largest selection of authentic jerseys and apparel for both club and country. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you part one of the 2014 SR4U Soccer Cleat Slash Football Boot Awards. Now I'm somebody who's in the unique position where I've had the opportunity to have first-hand experience and literally wear every single soccer shoe that has come out this year. Now in today's video, we're gonna be highlighting some of the best and worst in soccer cleats of the year. Please keep in mind that in the video, we're only gonna be talking about shoes that were released in 2014. So shoes that came out in 2013, like the Nike Hypervenom Phantom, that are of course still relevant, weren't eligible to win any of the awards in today's video. So just keep that in mind if you're wondering, Where's the Hypervenom or where's any particular shoe that, like I said, did not come out this year. So again, if you're interested to learn what were some of the highlights of this year in soccer cleats, please stick around. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. The first award is for the best lightweight shoe of the year. And to me, that goes to the F50 Addy Zero. There were a lot of really good lightweight shoes this year, but considering that the F50 Addy Zero was the lightest of the bunch, at least in terms of general releases that were readily available, in lots and lots of colorways. The F50 Addy Zero is just a tough shoe to beat. It's extremely lightweight, weighing in at around 5.6 to 5.8 ounces in a size 9 US. It's extremely comfortable considering how light it is, the combination of speed foil and hybrid touch, and of course the full hybrid touch of messy variations that we saw throughout the year were just very, very good shoes overall. It provides that thin, ultralight barefoot feel for the ball. You get the sprint frame, you get this very good uh, stud pattern that is a major improvement over previous F50 models. And as a package, if you're looking for something that is going to provide an ultra thin feel for the ball and something that is pretty much weightless on your feet, the F50 Addy Zero is, in my opinion, the best option on the market. The next award is for the best synthetic soccer cleat of 2014. And for this category, I have two winners, the Nike Mercurial Vapor 10 and the Puma Evo Power 1. The Vapor 10 is a shoe that I chose simply because the Tatian Synthetic is so thin, it provides this really true barefoot experience. It's also one piece, but it doesn't seem like it would work, but somehow it does. One piece uppers in the past have historically been not very good just in terms of fit, but this shoe really does offer a perfect wrap around your foot. It's so thin, it's so soft, it's so flexible. It's the nicest implementation of Tasian Synthetic we've ever seen from Nike on a Mercurial Vapor model. It has that nice tight fit that you'd expect from a Mercurial, but still maintains a surprising level of comfort and a surprising level of responsiveness. There's no uh, rollover in the upper. It responds a second that you do. And again, considering how thin the upper actually is, it's just a really, really impressive achievement. With the Evo Power 1, it features their Adapt Light Synthetic, which is equally as impressive as the Tejin on the Vapor 10. It's thin, but at the same time, it has this very plush quality that is really hard to come by from a synthetic material. It's a one-way stretch microfiber, so it'll stretch vertically as opposed to horizontally, which has to do with the design of the shoe actually bending backwards when you strike the ball. It's extremely comfortable, and what it does that no other shoe on the market does right now is that when you slide your foot inside, it almost stretches to the exact shape of your foot. It's a really unique sensation and a very positive one, and that is, again, one of the major reasons why the Puma Evo Power 1 and the Vapor 10, for me anyways, are two of the best synthetic soccer shoes of the year. The next award is for the best leather soccer cleat of 2014. And while there weren't a lot of leather releases in 2014, and this one in particular came out in very early January, so it hasn't really been in the spotlight as of late, to me, hands down, the Nike Tiempo Legend 5 is the winner as far as the best leather soccer cleat of 2014 is concerned. It offers a premium kangaroo leather upper, which offers a really traditional feel. They implemented their Hyper Shield liner, which does give it that slightly modern hint as far as designing is concerned. It's a very noticeable feature that eliminates a lot of extra layers that you would normally find with a natural kangaroo leather soccer shoe, and it just feels very, very premium. Of course, an honorable mention would go to the Adidas 11 Pro 3, but that shoe definitely has more of a modern feel to it versus the more traditional sensation that you're gonna get from the Tiempo Legend 5. And out of those two shoes, I definitely would say that I prefer the Legend, just based on being a very familiar feel. 
you like the feel of natural kangaroo leather, if you like that ultra comfortable sensation that you can get from a full leather soccer shoe, then for me personally, the Nike Tiempo Legend 5 was the shoe to buy in 2014. The next award is for the most unique soccer cleat of 2014. And I think without question, nobody's even gonna argue with me on this one. The Superfly 4 and the Nike Magista Obra were the most unique shoes of 2014. They were the first to market as far as knitted soccer shoes are concerned. It features a fly knit upper that offers a sock-like sensation, a mid-cut design, visuals that are unlike any other soccer shoe on the market right now, uh, cutting edge as far as innovation is concerned, and truly something that has never been done before. It really did ca catch on as far as with professional players as well as with consumers, and there's a reason why the Obra and the Superfly 4 have caught on as really the most popular shoes on the market right now. They perform the part, they look the part, and they really are the most unique shoes of 2014. The next award is for the best takedown model slash best value in soccer cleats for 2014. And that award definitely has to go to the Nike Mercurial Veloce 2. Now this is the first takedown model below the Vapor 10 in the Mercurial lineup. Has a retail price of $130 US in the normal colorways, uh, which is pretty pricey for a takedown model. But considering that they could be often found on sale, it just makes this shoe even that much better of value. Even at the full $130 retail price, essentially what you're getting here with the Veloce 2 is the Vapor 10 minus two very minor features. One being that it does not have ACC, no big deal there, honestly. And then of course it does not have the one piece upper construction, which a lot of people actually prefer, especially if you're a long time wearer of the Mercurial line and you wanted something with more of a traditional tongue, then the Veloce 2 probably will appeal to you a lot more than the Vapor 10 and it costs pretty much $70 less, sometimes more if you can catch these things on sale. Has the same Tasian synthetic upper, the same premium Mercurial Vapor fit, the same sole plate, the same stud pattern, and again, top end performance for essentially half the price. So if you're on the market for a pair of high end, high performing Mercurials, Veloce 2 really is the sweet spot within the Mercurial lineup and the best value of the year without a doubt. The next award is for the most underrated soccer cleat of 2014. And again, I have two winners. The first is the Nike Magista Opus, which is a shoe that was really overshadowed by the release of the Magista Obra, which is of course the mid-cut fly knit model. Now this is essentially is a successor to the Maestri 3. You could call it the unofficial Maestri 4, as I've been doing all year long. It features a Kangolite upper backed by a performance mesh material, and you can see there are cutouts along the entire upper, making it significantly thinner than all the previous Maestri models, but it's very lightweight, surprisingly lightweight, in at around seven ounces or so, has a very solid and comfortable feel on feet, and still has that premium Kangolite feel that you would expect, in that it's thin, but still feels leather-like in terms of the touch that it provides on the ball. One of my personal favorite Nike models out of their entire lineup at the moment. The second model that I have here is probably one that will come as a surprise to a lot of people. It is the Under Armour Clutch Fit Force. Now, the reason why this is what I consider to be one of the most underrated shoes on the market is not only one, it's made by Under Armour, which is not the most popular brand in soccer cleats right now, but two, it's actually a fantastic shoe, both in terms of comfort as well as performance. Features a very unique upper made from Travella Synthetic. Um, it's a two-way stretch microfiber material, and it actually does fit and feel absolutely phenomenal. This is also a contender for best synthetic of the year in that when you put it on, especially after some break in time, the upper has a elasticated quality about it is how I would describe it in that it wraps your foot and kind of compresses to your foot once you tie the laces tight. It's an unusual sensation, but really, really does feel good. Similar to the Evo Power to a certain extent, but not quite the same. It's also a very lightweight shoe, extremely comfortable with that 4D foam insole. And then of course you do have a very good stud pattern as well. So if you're looking for something that is different and very, very good as far as performance and comfort is concerned, uh, the uh, Clutch Fit Force is a great option, as well as the Magista Opus, even though both of these shoes haven't been the most popular. The next award is for the best update of 2014, which means a shoe that was released this year that was significantly better than its predecessor. And as you guys can see again with this particular category, I have two winners. The Adidas Predator Instinct, which replaced the Predator LZ2, and the Adidas 11 Pro 3, which replaced the 11 Pro 2. Now that's not to take anything away from the 11 Pro 2 and LZ2. Those are both very, very good shoes. But what we got with the Predator Instinct um, was a shoe that 
was significantly more aggressive than what we got with the LZ2. I think a much more premium overall shoe, both in terms of looks as well as feel. And it really just took the concept of having that all over grippy sensation to the next level. It brought the Predator back to a slightly more traditional state in terms of not being as light as what we saw from the LZ1 and 2, which not everybody liked, but I was personally a fan. And again, the, L the Predator Instinct to me was just one of the best shoes of 2014, one of my personal favorites to wear anyways. And as far as the 11 Pro 3 is concerned, it really took the 11 Pro line to the next level. It's a shoe line that's all about being a good combination of modern and classic in terms of feel. Of course, they have that Copa Mundial that's gonna offer that ultra classic feel. But with the 11 Pro line, we never really got that sense that we were getting what we should be getting as far as something that would be better or at least comparable to that of the, the Copa Mundial, but obviously in a more modern form factor. And with this particular shoe, with its kangaroo leather upper and its internal skeleton support cage, it really did take the shoe to the next level. It's a fantastic model. It's unlike any other kangaroo leather soccer shoe out there on the market. I think it's part of the reason why a lot of people are taking an interest to the 11 Pro 3. But again, as the best updates for 2014, the 11 Pro and the Predator Instinct are shoe shoes that you just can't go wrong with and are significantly better than, like I said, their predecessors. All right, guys, this is it for part one of the 2014 SR4U Boot Awards. If you guys are interested in watching part two, there'll be an annotation on screen as well as the very first link down below in the description of this video that'll take you directly to part two of the SR4U Boot Awards. In part two, I will be naming what I believe to be the best boot of 2014. So you probably don't wanna miss that. Again, if you wanna check it out, annotation on screen, first link down below in the description. If you guys want to leave your comments down below, I will answer all of your questions, but also I thought it'd be fun for you guys to give your own answers to all of the categories that I named in today's video, just to see how they would differ from mine. Because of course, everybody has their own opinions. None of the uh, awards that I've given in this video are fact. They're simply my opinions on what I believe to be the winners of each specific category. So it'd be cool to see how your answers differ from mine. And of course, if you guys want more detailed information on any of the shoes or products that you saw in today's video, check out my website, soccerreviewsforyou.com. There's all kinds of content there that I give you tons of information on the overall performance of, like I said, all the shoes in today's video. Again, if you guys have any questions or suggestions, leave those down below in the comment section. I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, Video, be sure to support it with a like subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear all my social media information is down below in the description if you're interested and other than that guys hope you enjoyed today's video and as always thanks for watching